I would like to welcome you all in this introductory session for the upcoming live training program under the title of Professional Approach to Design the Foundations by using CSI Safe Excel along with the manual design. This training is going to start from 23rd of March 2023. So we all are here together to understand what topics and what actually the content will be delivered through this training program. So in this start first we will try to understand the basic concepts for the substructure design and there are some myth in the mind of the beginners those who want to become a structural engineer those who are having some basic knowledge and concept basic understanding about the structure design but they are beginners in the field of structural engineers having some myth in their mind in respect of design of the foundations so very first we are knowing that the structure is having the two parts as the substructure and superstructure and we also know that the superstructure load is coming to the substructure but when we come to term of knowing the substructure so what does mean the substructure so substructure we are considering only the foundation so foundation is not only the substructure it's including the subsoil because the subsoil is having same importance as that of your foundation so whatever the load which is coming from the superstructure it is going to be transferred to the subsoil through your foundation. So when you come to talk about the substructure design, so there is not only the concern with the, your foundation, with your RCC element. Your RCC element along with the subsoil is combining going to make a foundation substructure. So this is what the first myth. And the second myth in our mind is that we are designing the foundation uh, for carrying the load. So whatever the load is coming from the superstructure, it is not going to be carried by your foundation, your RCC element. So when you come to talk about the substructure, so your foundation is not only the substructure, but also it is including the subsoil. So both foundation and the subsoil is going to make the substructure. This is the first. Second is what you are, we are not going to design the foundation. Whatever the type of foundation we are going to deal with, whether it is isolated, combined, raft, pile, whatever the type, it doesn't matter. So, we are not going to design that foundation to carry the superstructure. This is the second myth in our mind. We are providing that foundation just to transfer the load to the subsoil. Your foundation is a platform. Through that, we are transferring the load uh, that is coming from the superstructure to the subsoil. So, this is your soil mass. This is your subsoil Okay, so whatever the load coming from superstructure, we are transferring through this foundation slab to the subsoil. So most of the beginners, they, th they are thinking that we are designing this foundation to carry this load. No. Then the, you may ask a question, what for this foundation we are designing? So for that, we need to understand a very broad and very detailed theory about the substructure design. For what purpose we are designing this foundation? So like that, there are so many questions, so many doubts, so many myths in the mind of the beginners, those who want to become a structural engineers. They just have completed their bachelors and masters and they want to design the structure. There are a lot of questions in their mind. What that questions are, we will try to understand that in detail. So very first is what, uh, what are the different types of the foundations? Like there are isolated foundation, in isolated foundation, what are the different types? There is a pad footing, stepped footing, sloped footing, rough foundation is there, combined foundation is there, staff foundation is there, wall foundation is there, pile foundation, pile cap design, pile cap is there. So what are the different types of the foundations? This is the first question. Okay, we are knowing that there are different types of foundation, but for my proposed structure, if suppose I am going to deal any project which is G plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 floor or it is more than 20 floor, 30 floor building is there. So what type of the foundation will be suitable for my proposed structure? So this is what the second question most of the beginners they are asking. If I am going to deal in a pro any project. So what foundation I should choose? Either I need to go with the isolated foundation. Either I need to go for the combined foundation. Either I need to go with uh, the stepped footing, sloped footing. Thereafter, they are asking that it is needed to know the bearing capacity of the soil. The selection of particular type of foundation is depends on the bearing capacity of the soil. What does mean the bearing capacity of the soil? How you will get the bearing capacity of the soil? From where I will get the bearing capacity of the soil? So this is what the another question. Then 
most of the beginners they don't know about the swine investigation report without of having this soil investigation report how you can go to deal for the substructure design so like what does mean by this soil investigation report from where you will get this soil investigation report how you will get this soil investigation report it is needed to go for the soil investigation for all these structures if i am going to deal with the small medium or high rise structure so is there any relation to decide to go for the uh, soil investigation with the type of the structure with the height of its structure with the number of floors of the structure what approximation what similarity you can adopt to decide the bearing capacity of the soil what are the content of the soil investigation report how to read that soil investigation report to know the what are the methods the geotechnical engineer has adopted for knowing the capacity of the soil what is the settlement limit what is the conversion if we are having the value of the species of the soil in terms to kilonewton kilonewton to tons how you can convert that there after the second thing you are knowing all the things information you are having for your project then how to design that so when you come to talk about the design so like uh, there are different approach where the consultancies or industries or companies are going to adopt for the design of the foundations they are adopting the manual approach they are adopting the software they are using the software for the design of the foundations they are using the at different stages they are going to use the spreadsheets so whether you are aware with all that kind of practice or not you have to check on your own it's your job okay if suppose i am going to design the foundation by the software so at what stage i need to go for the software if simple box footing is there so i need to go for the manual i need to go with the spreadsheet i need to go with the software you have to decide that so under which situation it is needed to go for the software and what are the different softwares are available in market for the design of your substructure thereafter if suppose you are going to deal any real example project if i am giving you a g plus 20 floor building so what steps you have to follow what information you need to have for that particular project for the design of the substructure so step by step we have to see how to complete any project for the substructure design like from having the architectural plan till the releasing the drawing for the site execution especially for the substructure now the next and the most important thing can we trust on the software results and how we can validate the results of the softwares this is another important thing if suppose many of the beginners many of the participants they are asking that we are knowing the software but we don't have the confident in ourselves that whatever we are going to do that is right or wrong whatever the result we are getting from the software it is right or wrong we are not uh, uh, having the confidence over that so building of that confidence is another important thing so whenever you are going to talk about the design of uh, the substructure any of the uh, structural element if you are going to design three are the important things that you have to satisfy on that basis you can say that my structure is what correct my structure design is what correct but due to lack of confidence due, due to lack of knowledge due to lack of awareness what the beginners are doing they are unnecessarily going to provide the more section size like suppose these are the three main requirements if you are going to make your foundation as good in its strength in its stability in its serviceability so you need to have the uh, good knowledge about the, its design so the first requirement your sub structure design should have the sufficient strength second requirement is your your structure should be stable your structure should be what having the serviceability or the considered life of the structure so to achieve all these three parameters or these three requirements so beginners due to lack of knowledge confidence and awareness they are unnecessarily going to provide the more section size of the foundations they are thinking that if we are providing the very high depth so our structure will be uh, will be will be stable will be will will have the more strength will have the more serviceability if if we are providing a very high percentage of reinforcement so that our structure will be good if we are ch checking the very high taking the very high grades of steel and concrete so our structure will be very will, will be will, will be sustain, sustainable will be service uh, serviceable so but if we are going to provide very high section very high strength very high uh, percentage of reinforcement you are going to lose your money 
at the same time uh, you have to think about the economy you have to achieve the good strength you have to achieve the good stability you have to achieve the good serviceability along with the economy this is what the requirement of uh, the owner and if you are lagging uh, to to uh, to provide these things with the least of the cost then like uh, you are losing your client because lot of competitors in the market market are there so if you are going to make your design uneconomical so you are going to use, uh, lose your project so this is happening due to what uh, you are not having the confidence not having the command not having the uh, good uh, skill about the about the dealing with the software so this is what the scenario you need to understand if you want to become a structural engineer and here we are going to talk especially about the substructure design so to solve all these problems and to make you all ready for the industry to design this substructure especially we are going to present this training program where we are going to answer all that questions we are going to solve all that problems so this training program is going to start from 23rd of march and then in this training program we are going to cover three sections there will be the first section there will be the second section and there will be the third section so try to understand in detail what we are going to cover in this first section in this second section and in this third section so as we earlier have discussed that only this knowing only knowing the software is not the solution unless and until you are not having the confidence of uh, uh, doing the design manually you cannot deal with the software so that's why by keeping all that things in our mind we have prepared in the first section we are going to cover all the concepts for the substructure design what are the properties of the soil mass very first thing as i really told you that uh, substructure is not only your foundation your subsoil is having the equal importance because ultimately your entire load is going to be transferred to your subsoil your soil mass not to your foundation your foundation is just transferring the load to the subsoil so what what is the importance of study about the subsoil what is the properties of the soil soil what are the different properties of the subsoil which is playing an important role for resisting the load coming from the superstructure what does you know the contact pressure what does you know the settlement what is the limit for the different types of the foundations for their settlements if i am going to deal with the uh, 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 shallow foundation so what is the settlement limit if i am going to deal with the deep foundation what is the settlement limit and from where we will get this settlement limit what is what does you know the contact pressure what does you know the sub soil uh, sub grade modulus this is a very very important term, uh, term to understand because it is needed to understand And uh, and it is needed to define in your software also. Without of defining this subgrade modulus, you cannot go to pro, uh, you cannot proceed for the design of substructure even by using the software. So what is the importance of this subgrade modulus? What are the different types of this subgrade modulus? So in this training program, first uh, in this training program we will see the basic uh, some basic terminologies, some basic importance, some basic knowledge about the substructure design. so when you go when you come to talk about the sub uh, soil subgrade modulus so there are different types of so soil subgrade modulus if you are if you are putting uh, if your soil if your foundation is connected with the soil mass by its area so subgrade modulus will be different the formula will be different if your soil if your element is what line element line element flame element so at that time soil subgrade modulus formula in concept is going to be changed if you are going to deal with the pile foundation so at that time the soil subgrade modulus the value is going to be changed especially when you are going to deal with the pile foundation if you are going to deal with the strap footing you have to define the line spring property if you are going to deal with the uh, shallow foundation as simple box rough foundation at that time soil subgrade modulus property will be different so you need to understand that in concept we also we need to understand the uh, contact pressure what does you know this contact pre pressure what is the role of this contact pressure if you are going to deal simple concentric loaded footing if it is eccentric footing so how your structure how your foundation is going to respond 
that is also another important thing so this all basic concepts first we will try to understand then only we will proceed for the next step what will be the flexural behavior of your foundation how you can decide the positions of the reinforcement in your foundation when it is a, a, a simple box footing combined foundation strap footing wall footing raft foundation pile foundation so on what basis you can decide to provide the reinforcement either you have to provide the reinforcement at the bottom face either you have to provide the reinforcement at the top face so for that you need to have the knowledge and idea about the flexural response of all the different types of the footing under the loading condition so this i will cover in detail i will make you all master to understand the basic behavior of the foundations and basic terminologies basic knowledge basic information about these foundations after dealing all these things we are coming to the next point uh, in your first section only that will be what try to understand is a design of all these different types of foundation by manual approach software is just a tool like your calculator whatever you are going to give the input accordingly your software is going to Uh, is going to give the output if you are going to give the input wrong your software will give the output wrong if you are giving the input right your software will give the output uh, uh, right but sometimes we are giving the input right software is giving the wrong we are giving the input right uh, wrong so how you can validate the results of the software so to validate the results of the software you first have the confidence of designing of all the types of foundation by manual approach so in this training program first we will i will let you know how to design all the different types of foundation by the manual approach we will cover the simple box footing we will cover the uh, rectangular footing we will cover the stepped footing sloped footing and i can say the uh, 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 simple strap footing combined foundation all the different types of uh, pile pile cap design so no one will tell you about all these things so i am trying to make you all uh, perfect and confident for the designing of your uh, your all types of foundation by manual approach after doing all this design by manual approach in the next step uh, we will see like uh, how to design all these different types of foundations uh, by using the spare sheets so see here we are going to design all different types of uh, uh, all pile cap designs two pile cap three pile cap four pile cap six pile cap design by manual approach and all these design results for your uh, uh, for your manual designs we are going to validate it with your spare sheets so we are having these spare sheets for the design of all the different types of foundation this is the next level uh, spare sheets so in in this training program in respect of all the different types of foundations as uh, as isolated combined raft pile whatever so we are having the advanced level spare sheets this is for the simple box and stepped foundation if you are going to design simple box and stepped foundation you can use these spare sheets these are very practical spare sheets so if sim- a single foundation you have to deal so using this spare sheet you can design that if if the slope footing you have to design so you can use these spare sheets if you want to design the combined foundation you can use this spread sheet if you want to design the strap footing you can use this spread sheet this is what advanced level very practical spread sheet it is if you want to design two pile cap you can use this spread sheet if you can design the four pile cap you can use this spread sheet so these are the different sheets that you can use for the design of the uh, different types of the foundation so in the first section what we are covering try to understand in the first section we are uh, covering the uh, basic concepts manual design and that all manual design we are going to validate uh, with the excel sheets now after getting the confidence over dealing all these different types of foundations manually we are looking at uh, the software we are going to use the safe software for the design of the service structure but when you when you come to the software so again the same thing you have to validate the result so let's consider an example suppose uh, this is what the one example i am going to take here where the single 
isolated foundations uh, some foundation we have to design and the sbc of the soil here it is what 200 kilonewton the grade of concrete is what 25 uh, uh, mpm the section size of the column 230 by 600 grade of steel is 500 clear cover for the foundation we all know very well if you are going to deal with a single foundation uh, so clear cover for the foundation will be of 50 mm and the axial load over the column which is coming as 1100 kilonewton initial size of the diameter of bar we are going to consider as 16 mm now we all know that the self weight of the foundation we have to consider so i am going to consider the self weight of the foundation as 10 10 percent of whatever the load coming from your super uh, from your super structure so here this sheet will give the idea what length of the footing you should choose what width of the footing you should choose so i am going to choose the width of the footing uh, length of the footing as 2.7 and width of the footing as 2.3 so it is giving the check whether the whether in upward soil pressure your foundation is safe or not so you are having this some idea about the substructure uh, substructure or especially the foundation design i am going to consider that so upward soil pressure is less than that of should be less than that of the uh, sbc of the soil so our sbc is what 200 and upward soil pressure is what 194 so we can we can say that the design is what correct the size that you have adopted is what correct so upward soil pressure is less than of your sbc so sheet will give the idea that uh, it is okay if you are failing to provide this correct uh, uh, size of the uh, uh, foundation let's say i am going to make it as 2.1 so you are getting the uh, uh, suggestion increase the size of footing with whatever the value you are going to proceed it is not right so that's why you uh, this this sheet will give the check that's why i'm going to call it as the advanced level, very practical sheet it is now after that here you have to decide the section size of the foundation so i'm going to decide the section overall depth as 600 thereafter uh, with a 12 mm diameter of bar uh, in both of the direction uh, the requirement of the spacing is what 157 157 but for the safety concern i am going to provide 125 125 in both of the direction so we are getting the check for the one way shear as safe along the length uh, one way shear check along the uh, width it is safe in both direction in punching also your one way shear check is correct so this is what the design result design summary so i am going to validate these designs with your safe software also so here for each individual foundations we are going to check so when you, once you go uh, so in, when you come to the csi safe software how to define the material properties how to define the material properties how to define the section properties how to define the load combinations how to define the load cases what are the different commands of this software so in this training program in the first section only we are taking the sample project and through that sample project our objective will be to make you all master to deal with this uh, safe software unless and until you are not uh, uh, going to understand the user interface of the software basic commands of the softwares how to how to how to handle different options of this software you will not get the confidence so for in the in the first section only we are going to make you confident by for using this software we will explain each and every options of this software at the next level so okay we have to define the material property we have to define the section properties we have to define the load combination we have to define the load cases groups uh, uh, wall properties soil subgrade modulus so here in the software we have to define the soil subgrade modulus what does you know the soil subgrade modulus i earlier told you all that uh, importance of soil subgrade modulus so like uh, uh, with all of these studies we are going to proceed and we are going to validate the results so when you come to model the structure model the foundations so here there are two approaches here there are actually two approach in one approach what we are doing we are going to actual modeling of the column in the second approach uh, i'm telling to the students instead of modeling of actual column we have to model model the steep steep column steep area so what is why i'm going to recommend that you have to model the steep area instead of the column 
what will be the influence of uh, modeling the uh, stiff area instead of your column over your design over your analysis so this is a very interesting topic to discuss and it takes time to explain why it is why instead of modeling of the column actually we have to model the stiff area over your, over your foundation what does mean the design strip what is the role of this design strip what are the different methods in your safe software for the design of the foundation so when you come to design so there are different methods for the design i will talk about that later so okay i am going to perform the analysis being assigning of the load so just come to your xy plane and have a look over uh, see how to assign the loads that you can see your assignment of the loads so i have assigned the load uh, 1100 kN as coming from your structure look at this here we have consider load coming from the super structure over your column as 1100 kN so that i have assigned over the uh, foundation so in respect of that and in respect of modeling of the floating modeling of the column i am going to perform the analysis so once you click over the analysis so analysis is going to start and once the analysis gets completed what next step will be try to understand we have to check the analysis result whether your foundation is passing under the upward soil pressure check or not so for that we need to uh, check we need to check under the service load combination so the uh, beginners are also asking about the for which load combination we have to define the foundation like suppose if you are going to, if you are going to deal with the high rise structure so for the high rise structure uh, we need to define about 75 load combinations try to understand if your structure is subjected to earthquake loading if your structure is subjected to wind loading so in both uh, 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 or or in addition to the gravitational loading and suppose the structure is more than 20 30 floor so there are 20 75 or about 100 load combination will be so for which load combination we have to define what is the role of uh, uh, design envelope load combination envelope whether we have to go with the design with the uh, envelope or not so lot of uh, confusions the participants or beginners are having in their mind they are just watching the uh, 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 videos through their youtubes from there they are not getting the uh, uh, solution or or answer to uh, answer of their doubts so we are with this training program with you to give the answer to all your question at different stages so it is don't consider it that uh, these all things are available at any other platform so here we will answer to all that questions all that problems that is going to raise in your mind we will we will sort out all those problems so for this service load combination i am going to see the upward soil pressure so here the upward soil pressure will be what this so if i am going to see here so 194.32 upward soil pressure maximum we are getting so go to your excel sheet and check 193 uh, how much the upward soil pressure is there 194.85 upward soil pressure you are getting here and in this you are getting 194 194 here also you are getting and uh, in excel sheet 194 so it is exactly matching or not check for the bending moment so whether for uh, for the factor load combination we have to check the bending moment so you have to validate the bending moment in in along the width uh, along the length uh, okay how to model the design strip uh, uh, you have to model for full full width uh, for for a unit width uh, so lot of things are there actually to discuss okay so i will i will check for the bending moment along the length along the width we will validate this moment then we will validate the one way shear punching shear i will let you know all that things how to perform the punching shear so punching shear performance is there then how to validate the punching shear value punching shear calculation with your manual approach or or by excel sheet with your manual calculation so here punching shear value you are getting 0.55 so if you are going to uh, take the ratio of this 0.75 1.1 so this is a punching shear ratio can anyone tell me what will be this ratio 0.751 divided by 1.104 can anyone tell me how much it is it is going to become 0.6802 so this is what the value punching shear ratio we are getting by with the manual approach and the software is giving what 0.56 so slight difference is there 
why this difference is going to be happen and uh, uh, like how to match it exactly so this all things i will uh, explain in detail so actually i will give the validation no one will tell you about this how to validate your manual results with the software so for each of uh, individual foundations not only for this simple isolated foundation for the combined foundation also i will give the validation for the strap footing i will give the validation for the pile cap and pile design uh, i will give the validation so for every of the type of the foundation i will give the validation so that you will get the confidence that right i am uh, whatever i am going to deal with the software i am correct i am not going to rely on the software result only i am going to validate that so this level of knowledge you are going to get uh, from this training program so with all of this then we will give the task also you have to complete that task we will give the assignments also so through that assignments you you are going to learn you are going to get the hand over the software so for each of the individual foundations you have to what uh, you have to do the practice with the software and you have to uh, submit these values submit this your calculations so you are get, your problem is what going to uh, 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 will will coming okay so that problems you can raise you can ask that problems and we will get uh, together trying to find out the answer of that problems with the software so for all individual foundation as combined isolated strap footing rough uh, uh, pile foundation rough foundation pile cap design so you are getting the problems you have to solve that problems and you are going to learn actually so it is not just other training program that we are going to give the only the recordings okay so this is what the uniqueness of this live training program hope that you all understood now with all of this we are moving towards the next part of this training program that will be your actually the dealing with the real example projects so after making you all confident and experts for the manual design for the conceptual understanding for the validating the software we are moving to the next part of this training program as dealing with the real example projects so ultimately your objective is is to become a structural engineer and to become an independent structural engineer right so here we are going to take four real life projects so in the first and second real life project we are trying to cover all the isolated types of foundations we are going to take a project such that your your all the doubts in respect of simple isolated foundations uh, uh, coverage will be there in the third real life project we are going to cover the rough foundation in the fourth real life project we are going to cover pile and pile cap design so overall all foundation is going to be cover what is going to remain so when you are going to deal any real example projects so what are the steps you have to follow you need to understand that all first so very first when you are going to deal any projects so very first thing is a, a, a design steps what design steps you have to follow okay so very first is what exploration of the uh, soil condition or site condition unless and until you are not having the uh, Uh, knowledge about the site condition bearing capacity of the soil strength of the soil uh, soil settlement in the soil mass so you cannot proceed further for the design so very first approach so who will tell you about uh, the strength of the soil so the soil investigation report is very important then the role of the soil investigation uh, will come into the picture that uh, soil investigation report you will get uh, from the from the soil investigator from the geotechnical engineer so this kind of soil investigation report you will get how to read this soil investigation report what are the what are given in this soil investigation report how to find out where the bearing capacities of the soil is given what type of the foundation we are recommended by this soil mass uh, sorry by this soil investigation report so soil investigation report will give the every data in respect of the settlement in respect of the method of the uh, uh, exploration where adopted in respect of the uh, 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 layers definitions at the top uh, whether loose soil is there stick soil is there by what percentage 
the stiffness of the soil mass is going to increase when you are moving from top layer to the bottom layer. So everything will be given here. Okay. So after that you will get the uh, bearing capacity of the soil and all the important uh, uh, capacities, all the properties of the soil. And this soil, this soil investigation report also recommends that what type of foundation you should choose for the design of the foundation. What type of the uh, foundation you should choose. Either you need to go with the shallow foundation, either you need to go with the pile foundation or, or deep foundation actually. So who will suggest? Your soil investigation report will suggest. So how to read that soil investigation report? No, it is important. So we will let you know how to read that soil investigation report. So after, uh, after having this soil investigation report, the next requirement is what? Next requirement is knowing the anticipated load. What does it mean this anti anticipated load? So like to have the how much the load coming at the base of your structure that is ne needed to understand. So if you are going to deal any project, so you need to create the model of that project. Unless and until you are not going to create the model, you will not get the probable load that is going to be developed at the base of your structure. So for the design of your substructure, you need to have the you need to have different things. Amongst them, the most important parameter you need to have the base reaction. Unless and until you are not having the base reaction, you cannot find the how much the sizes of the foundation is required. So without of having the sizes of without of having the reactions, you cannot proceed for the design of the foundation. So how to deal with the uh, 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 ETAP software, especially for knowing the base reaction that you will see in detail. So after knowing the base reaction, then how to export this reaction? How to export the layout of the plan? So there are basic approaches are there. To, to have the positions of your column, to, to have the positions of uh, your reactions. But that all things will take a time. So I will give the smart approach how you can directly export the reaction, how you can directly export the, uh, how you can directly export the, this layout of the columns. So in CAD, you don't need to especially, uh, uh, you don't need to draw these columns. You don't need to uh, decide the positions of your column. I will give the advanced or smart approach. You can directly export the reaction as well as the layout of your column from these ETABs to CAD. And that exported reactions you can that exported reaction you can import in the CSI safe software. So there are a lot of important things we need to understand while exporting the while exporting the reactions from your from your software to from your software from your ETAP software to your safe software and then how you can import the directly layout of the foundation from from your CAD to CSI safe software so after doing all those things here what we are doing we need to we need to what have the layout of the foundation we need to have the reaction in your CSI safe software. If you are not going to decide, define the reaction in CSI safe software, so you cannot proceed further. As earlier told you, for the design of foundation, very first thing we need to have the reaction. Now second thing, we need to define the soil property. So if your SBC of the soil is suppose 200, so uh, as this SBC directly you cannot define in the software. Then the question is what? How you can define this bearing capacity? So soil subgrade modulus. We have to define in the ETAP software, in the CSI safe software. So option here it is given that soil subgrade property. So how to define this soil subgrade property? We will discuss in detail. And after design, defining that soil subgrade property, you have to assign to all the foundations. You have to model the foundations. Okay. So when you come to model the foundation, you need to decide what type of foundation you should choose. If suppose I am going to deal this project, it is G plus 8 floor. So for this project, what type of foundation I have to choose? Isolated foundation, step to putting, slope to putting, rough foundation, pile foundation. So that will be suggested by your soil investigation report. Then I have to model that in the software. 
after modeling of that we need to what draw the design strips so what is the role of like uh, uh, how to design this uh, define this design strip or if i am not going to design this uh, 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 i am not going to model this design strip then what other option is there so when you are going to design uh, design so in in csi safe software two options for the designs are there one is your finite element based method another one is the strip strip based method so some of the consultants they are adopting the strip based method some of the consultants they are adopting the finite element based method so why some consultants are adopting strip based method why some consultants are adopting a finite element based method so we are going to learn in detail about this both of the methods or we will also understand that in this situation for which particular project for which particular type of foundation for which situation it is better to go with the strip based method or for which situation it is better to go with the finite element based approach for the design of your foundation so that all things we will cover in detail so after the performing of analysis we are going to perform the check for the serviceability we are going to design the foundation for the ultimate condition for the limit state condition okay we will define the different load combinations and uh, what how to define this load combination we will learn okay how to define the load envelope when to use the load envelope when when it is not needed to use the envelope everything we will try to cover in detail along with that uh, see in the first project we will we will take a sample simple building simple simple foundation there we will cover the isolated foundation step the footing slope the footing single single com uh, simple com uh, combined foundation small com uh, combined foundations in the first and second project in the third project we are going to cover a raft foundation let me show you in the third project we will cover the raft foundation how to model this raft foundation in this situation you need to go for the raft foundation how to how to draw the design strips in the in case of your raft foundation what is the settlement criteria for your raft foundation then while designing how to position your raft, uh, uh, reinforcement for your raft foundation it is needed to provide only the reinforcement at the bottom surface at the top surface if it is feeling failing in punching so how to make that uh, uh, a uh, foundation to be passed the design criteria in punching in shear one way shear two way shear minimum percentage of reinforcement maximum percentage of reinforcement section sizes so everything we will try to cover in detail in respect of this raft foundation also and in in the last project we are going to cover the pile and pile cap design this is the most important and uh, we will cover this raft foundation for the high rise structure for this kind of high rise structure when your structure is uh, going to impose very high intensity of the load at its base so at that time or or along with the uh, 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 soil investigation report recommendation if it is needed to design the pile foundation or pile cap uh, so how to do that how to execute that so we will cover all that how to draw the layouts of the pile cap how you can decide the pile cap uh, pile cap geometry okay either it will be, it will be rectangular uh, or any of the shape trapezoidal shape or it uh, 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 three piles four piles one pile two pile six pile five pile uh, on what basis you can decide the number of piles how to do the design for the piles everything we are trying to cover in detail what is the detailing for your pile cap how to detail it uh, how to detail it how to how to prepare the schedule in respect of the design result for the different piles okay so that we will cover in this training program in the fourth project so like that here you are not going to learn the simple manual calculation here you are not going to learn only the commands of the software here you are not going to learn only the uh, uh, designed by using spreadsheets here you are not going to learn uh, only the uh, uh, manual approach and basic approach here you are going to here we are trying to cover the four real life projects also so after doing all these four real life project you can deal any of the project for the design of the substructure okay so that is what you are going to learn from this training program okay so let's come back to discussion 
so here in the third case third step we will decide the type uh, we will decide the type of foundation and accordingly we are going to proceed and we will uh, go to design and we will prepare the uh, design in respect of the flexural shear and then after the completion of the design we have to prepare the schedule and detail so like others we are not going to talk about only the software after the designing we have to interpret the results of the software also we have to interpret the results of the software and in respect of the results of the software we have to prepare the schedules okay so here we have to pre prepare the schedule so this is what the designs for uh, the project for the first project second project and third fourth project like that and then we will prepare the schedule for which particular column which size of the footing is required and what will be the detail of that foundation everything will be there this is for the another project this is for the another project so this kind of uh, uh, spread uh, uh, design sheets you have to prepare we are not going to send the excel report we are not going to send uh, manual calculation report we are not going to send model on site for the site execution we actually have to send this design sheets so how to prepare this design sheet how to prepare the schedule and detail everything we will try to cover in detail so this is for the raft foundation raft detailing we will cover that also in our training program and this is for the pile and pile cap design okay so this we will see in detail so this is what all about here uh, about all about this complete training program and here all the materials are open for you all for your learning every material that we are going to use in this training program we will share with you all so in this training program you will get uh, this there are uh, we will uh, you will get different excel sheets as for the simple box footing stepped footing slowed footing raft foundation pile foundation pile cap design all that excel sheets uh, you will get in this training program uh, including of the cost of the training there will be no extra cost for this all excel sheets so and these all are the practical sheets we will provide uh, in this training program okay now see then after the completion of this training program we, you will get the certificate also after completion of this training program you will get the certification also this is what the iso certification so that will help you to get the entry in any of the consultancy in any of the company so this training program is going to start from 23rd of march and in uh, the feature of this training program will be what there will be the live classes live interaction will be there whatever your doubts questions problems you can raise there and we'll try to sort out your problems so daily live classes will be there where i am going to deliver the session and uh, you have to attend that if you are having any question you can ask the question at that time only and if you are if uh, while practicing on your own if you are facing any problem you can contact with us we are ready to solve your problem and here we are not uh, uh, focusing on only giving the commands of the software only only talking about the commands of the software and making you handicap when you are going to deal with the real example project so here we are trying to give the real experience that the consultants consultancy is adopting for dealing of any project and after the completion of the program you will get the certification and after each of the session you will get the recordings and that recording will be is going to be updated within 2 hours like suppose by by today we are going to conduct the class from 9 to 9 to 10 pm so within 2 hours that live that live class is going to be updated as recording and that recording will be available live uh, live long you can use any time that recordings so this is what in this uh, complete training program we are trying to provide so this uh, this training program as we earlier told you many times so the program is going to start from 23rd march the session timing will be uh, 9 to 10 pm in evening and uh, the training fee is actually 5000 rupees so if you if you are uh, willing to join this uh, uh, career changing training program and taking your knowledge to the next level and becoming a professional structural engineer not just to learn the commands of the software as from other platform so here uh, you can join this training program you can pay the fee through this given uh, through any of this mode as gpay phone pay paytm on this given number 8857891345
and the training fee is 5000 after paying fee you have to send the screenshot of your payment and uh, for the details you have uh, we will ask and we will proceed accordingly so this is all about this training program if you are having any doubt and question so that you can ask hello everyone welcome you all in a new iso certified live training program design of substructure using csi safe excel and manual in this training program we will learn all about the concept of substructure design commands in csi safe software for the substructure design validation of csi safe result with your manual and advanced excel sheets this training program will cover four real life projects in the first and second we will cover all the types of isolated foundation in csi safe software in the third real life project we will cover the raft foundation and in the fourth real life project there will be the coverage of pile and pile cap design design of basement wall and at the end of this training program we will learn how to prepare the final design sheet for the site execution have a look over the features of this training daily live classes conducted by experts recording of every session can interact with expert anytime exposure to real practice iso certification of training it's five star rated training program till now more than 1000 participants have benefited from this training program now you are the next Welcome you all in ISO certified live training program ETAPS RCDC and Excel that makes you a professional structural engineer. In this training program you will learn everything about ETAPS and RCDC from basic to advanced, real life project of medium rise structure from architecture plan to final design sheet, real life project of high rise structure with all advanced topics, design of structural elements using advanced Excel sheets. Have a look over the features of this training. Daily live classes conducted by expert for one and a half hour. Recording of every session with lifetime access. Can interact with expert anytime 24 by 7. Exposure to real practice. ISO certification of training completion. It's five star rated training program. Till now more than thousand participants have benefited from this training program. Now you are the next.